And today we are joined by uh, Craig Dennis from Cloudflare, and we're going to talk about LlamaGuard. Uh, Craig built a pretty cool app. I only very briefly helped him with it. So the stage is mainly going to be Craig's, and at some point I will come in and tell you about how the Haystack pipeline was built. But with that, maybe Craig, I'll leave it to you to describe what LlamaGuard is, uh, why we use it, and then you can take it from there. Let's see that you can share your screen maybe, and I will keep myself unmuted if there are any questions. Awesome. Is There we go. I am screen sharing. I see that I am screen sharing. How are we looking uh, size wise? Everybody good there? think it feels good. It feels large on my screen. <laughs> okay, awesome. So uh, hi, everybody. My name is Craig. I am uh, so happy to be here with you. I'm a developer educator at Cloudflare. Uh, if you haven't heard about Cloudflare, don't worry, we're going to talk about it a little bit here. The chances are you have heard about it, but I'm pretty sure based on experience that you might not have heard about uh, what we're doing with AI just yet. Um, uh, and by the way, we're doing lots of stuff with AI. I'm so excited about being able to build with AI here uh, with you. Uh, uh, and, and we've been building all sorts of really fun stuff, really st amazing stuff, stuff that like we were told we're never going to be able to do this as a developer. And it's super exciting. I, I love this. Um, I would love to ask um, uh, uh, the audience if you, uh, if, if you could tell me how how you're feeling about AI. Um, so so uh, when I do this in person, I, I try to do like this little thumb level guard, but let's do five to one. So how how much are you using AI? Let's put a five in, in the chat um, uh, for, for here. Oh, oh I, I'm getting a, a thumb there from Tilda. Five out of five from Twana. All right. So um, uh uh yeah so so uh four maybe you like want to use it but you can't quite use it or three like you've been playing with it two you're kind of scared of it and one like why am i even oh is this about it is this an ai meetup i'm at the wrong meetup are we are we there <laughs> okay awesome cool so we're, we're getting fives this stuff is super cool it's really powerful um uh, and i think that we would see a lot more of it if it were a little bit safer, right? If people weren't so scared of it. And uh, I know that we see this, I see this, I hear this from everybody. It's like, I built this cool thing, I wanna launch it. Really can't launch it because uh, of this Mad Lib that I have here on the screen. So so as a, as a uh, PR person, we're scared that you are going to embarrass our company by putting out an LLM that goes kind of off the rails and says something strange. Uh, as a parent, I'm scared that it's going to say something to my child that I don't want them to. As a whatever, right? The the, the point is that there's fear there. And there's been some solutions to this actually. Um, um, let's, uh, let's, let's take a look really quick. I wanna show you, uh, I wanna show you, I forgot to have this, this page open here real quick um yep there it is right out haystack llama guard here we go um there's been some solutions in the past so uh open ai has this really awesome solution uh called uh their moderation api and what you can do uh with with this is you can run a query and you can say hey what does this text feel like? Does it show any of these things? And then when it comes back, like, so so here you go, you do a little post to it. When it comes back, you can see that things got flagged or not. And it's really nice. And this is great if you are using uh, OpenAI, but as you know, <laughs> we can't all afford uh, to do that all the time. We can't always use OpenAI. And there's lots of models that are great, that are uh, uh, inexpensive and possibly um, might meet your use case better than than what OpenAI AI is offering, uh, especially <laughs> again at the price level. Um, uh, so so my screen's so big right now. Um, uh, so so uh, they had this idea of like, what if we added this this extra guard, and that actually helps. What what people find is that. Uh, uh, now I feel safe because there's a little bit of moderation there, but that leaves the people who have this like open source and I'm going to use open source. I, I did the, I did the air quotes there on the open source because I know that, uh, that can get some people who are, uh, very, very pedantic about open source. And what, what that means is it's a different things sometimes than these models, these models that are out there that are open models, right? Um, the open models that are out there don't necessarily have this moderation API, but they do. There is an open model called LlamaGuard. And let's take a look really quick uh, here at this, this page. Um, so um, LlamaGuard is, uh, LlamaGuard is, uh, here, let's make this bigger. It's very small. Um, 
Llama Guard allows you, it's an open model, and it allows you to, to, to do some prompt classification and also response classification. Because if you think about it, not only is it what your your users are saying, it's you also might be concerned about what your your LLM is saying, right? What your what your your AI is saying back to the user. And so what they let you do is they let you classify this. And you can come in and you can you can define what categories are safe and unsafe. Uh, I look at this llama guard here. Uh, this is this is really good. It's got like a the Braveheart little llama guard thing. It will tell you if it's safe or if it's unsafe. And you'll see that it has like a category here. So it's it you you define what these categories are. Uh, by default, there's this really nice list that they've gone, and it says it should not uh, assist in violence. It should not encourage it, and all sorts of different things that you want to uh, keep uh, secure. Now. In reality, uh, a lot of these models already have this stuff built into it, right? So they, they have this, this baseline alignments uh, to things. But LlamaGuard, if you put this in front of it, really helps uh, that go forward. So uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, and let's 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 talk about some of the tools that we're going to be using here. So um, like I said, I work for Cloudflare and we have a product uh, that just went GA uh, last week, uh, uh, Cloudflare Workers AI. So we have inference as a service. We have all sorts of uh, powerful tools that will help you build the AI applications that you need. And one of those things uh, that we do uh, there is we, we provide models. And one of the models that we provide is uh, is is LlamaGuard. Uh, but first, before we get there, you might know of Cloudflare already, and it's kind of important to know uh, when we talk about workers AI, a, a little bit about Cloudflare. Um, so Cloudflare, 14 years ago, we started with this mission to help build a better internet, and we've been doing that. And uh, the way that it, uh, the way that that looked originally was we needed the internet to be faster. It's not fair around the world. It's not fair that that the internet isn't as fast as it as it could be. So we put data centers everywhere. There's data centers and you can come and you can connect to our network. And we try to make that fast and reliable and more secure. And we've built and built on top of that. Um, and part of the internet, as we're seeing now, is this AI, right? So, so we if we're going to help make a better internet, we have to make people's AI better as well. So what we did was we took uh, GPUs and we sprinkled those in these data centers that are all around the world. So now you can run your inference at the closest to where your users are. And it turns out that users like that, right? Like, so if you have this latency, we, we're, we're starting to see these problems where people are having latency problems uh, and they think it's the AI that's slow, but really what it is, is, is it's the internet, right? It's the it's the uh, going to hit the AI is a, a, these hops back and forth. But we have all of our tools that can live and, we, and that's called on the edge. And the nice thing about this, when you when you go and you deploy your, your, your work here, um, is you deploy it to region Earth. You don't think about where it goes, you just deploy your code. So that's called Workers. That's a developer platform that we have. But we also have a REST API that lets you hit those. Uh, also, will also hit as close as it possibly can. So, um, so that there, there, I, I reintroduced you to that. Um, we talked uh, already a little bit about Llama Guard. We're going to get our hands on that here. And uh, before we get there, I just want to uh, show you really quick. Um, I've built an app, and if you haven't seen this before, I, I am in love. Uh, I'm in love with Streamlit so much so that like uh, I, I use them enough that they sent me some stickers recently uh, uh, because I I use them all the time. I use them in uh, demos and I use them at hackathons because you can build these really quick apps. And I paired that with uh, Haystack, which also lets you build really quick apps. But I'm going to show you first a little bit of how this works here, and then I'm going to pass it uh, over to Tawana here. Um, so if we look uh, here, this is this is Streamlit, and Streamlit is it's Python, and it's gonna it's it's kind of hard to to to, to get your brain around at, at first, but if you just just imagine it's coming and it's just rendering the application as it goes, and it's kind of exactly what you might think about if you never made a front end application uh, before. I actually love it. So it has this thing called session state, and I'm gonna store the messages in the session state, um, and you you uh, write out these little widgets. So they use, they use these, these Python libraries for this and uh, you can write out uh, Markdown. And uh, we'll, we'll walk through some of this stuff here, but I just doing this chat input. But basically what I wanna show you is there's 52 lines of code. Some of that is some of the Haystack stuff. And I'm just gonna kick this off really quick and then I'm gonna pass that over. I'll show you, show you what this looks like. Um, uh, so I'm gonna kick off my Streamlit app. Uh, here it is running. And uh, I am so excited here that I am going to say I want to air punch. I'm going to start this. 
and I am so excited. Is that safe? I don't know. I've got Llama Guard running on both sides of this. Is is I want to air punch safe? It is going to be safe. Uh, and I'm going to show you how that Llama Guard works here in a second. But first, before we get there, I want to show off. Um, Streamlight made this nice and easy. Wait till you see how nice uh, Haystack made this work. I'm going to I'm going to uh, pass the screen to you, Tawana. All right. So. And uh, now I'm going to start sharing my screen. You can tell me if you can see it. Sure. Um, this is the first time I'm doing a presentation like this. It's really not slide based. So let's see how it goes. So just in case there are people in the audience who are not familiar with Haystack, what is Haystack? Haystack is a AI framework. And the basic idea of the architecture is that we provide components and you can attach those components to each other to build out a complete pipeline. Now that pipeline might be indexing documents to a vector store. It might be retrieval augmentation. It might be some sort of a chat application that you saw that Craig just built. So that is the idea behind Haystack. And this QR code takes you to the Haystack repository. And then the other thing I want to quickly show you is the how components are even built and what they mean. So a component in Haystack is simply a class and it really is up to you. You can build custom components. And this is what Craig has done. <laughs> this whole project is actually custom components. Um, and you can define what sort of the inputs of a component is and what the outputs of a component is. And the pipeline structure in Haystack is very, very flexible. So an example of two components, I hope you can see my mouse. Do you see my mouse when I like? Yeah, OK. Um, this is a very simple example. For example, this one might be a component that is creating embeddings from this sentence and then it's outputting embeddings and this could be another component that is accepting embeddings and then maybe returning some documents that could be a retriever but again that is totally up to you and a component most importantly doesn't have to have just one output it can have many outputs it can loop etc i'm not going to dive straight into it like the whole thing i'm not going to explain the whole thing but i'll explain to you the idea behind this llama god app so we wanted to build an application where, let's say, a user has input. And by the way, this pipeline structure you see, you can generate automatically with Haystack pipelines, which is pretty neat and handy to see. Um, but hopefully, it makes sense. Uh, let's say we have user messages. We want those user messages to be sent to a user moderator. And the, either the user moderator, in this case, LlamaGuard, is going to deem these messages to be safe in which case we can send that message over to the large language model that we want to use to generate a chat response to us. But we don't want to stop there. We will also want to evaluate whether the large language model, in this case, the assistant that is replying to us, we want to evaluate whether they are sending a response back that is deemed to be safe. Now, Craig will show you all of the ins and outs of how you deem something to be safe or not. This is actually very customizable as well. And what happens is if it's deemed to be safe, then you see a response. If not, this is what happens if not. If either the user or the assistant is returning something that is unsafe, we have a very nice little custom component here called busted. And busted will tell you, mm -mm, you're busted. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna send this out. And also, it will tell you the reason that you're busted. So you will get a reason as to why a message was deemed unsafe. Was it maybe um, violent? Uh, did it maybe have any sort of hate speech in it? And so on and so on. Craig will show you how that is done. All right. So you had a look at the Streamlit application. But let's build the pipeline. So the first thing I want to do is I create a pipeline. And later on, we'll have a look at how LlamaGuard and the large language model, in this case, the Cloudflare chat generator is built. I think the more interesting ones are actually the busted generator and LlamaGuard. Um, but first, what we do is we have a pipeline, and we have a user moderator, and we have an assistant moderator. So these two are going to be separate components, and one of them is going to get input from the user, and the other is going to get input from the assistant. First thing I do is I add all of those to my pipeline. Let's just do this and comment them out. And now I have a pipeline with components. And the way the Haystack pipeline construction works is that you can be very, very, very specific 
with the connections between these components. So the next block here that I'm going to show you is where I am defining my connections. So I'm basically saying, if the user moderator deems that there are safe messages, those safe messages get sent to the large language model. If the user moderator, this maybe we could have named this something a bit better, but we called them reasons. So these are unsafe messages alongside the reasons that they are unsafe. They get sent over to our busted generator that will explain to us why uh, something is deemed unsafe. Um, if the large language model is now able to generate a reply because something was safe and they can go ahead, then they get moderated. And then if the moderator for the large language model says, nope, you can't, you can't say this, then we also go to busted for the assistant moderator. And that's really it. Let me try and get up a terminal and run this and let's hope that it does run. Let me just make sure that this is, yeah, let's do this. No, this is the wrong thing. Oh no, who goes serve? I don't want who goes serve. I want streamlet run app. That's the wrong streamlet run app. Hopefully that works. We're here. Do you see the streamlet app running? This is all of my custom we, color. Oh, yes, yes, we do. Oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I said it uh, this way. I like it. The, um, the, there's a question about, is this being recorded and will it be shared out afterwards? And I just thought yeah, we yeah. answered live. Absolutely. Yes, this will be recorded. Yes. We'll get it, get it out to you. Yes. So shall I give it a go? And then afterwards, I'm going to be handing it back to Craig where he is going to break it. We're going to make the user get busted. And also the most difficult one, get the assistant get busted. Um, so what should I say? I tried a conversation yesterday where I was saying, my friend is coming. And the LLM replied, great. And I said, well, unfortunately, they're celiac. And then the LLM gave me some examples of what I could maybe cook for them. Then I said, I'm going to put some flour in the water and I got busted. So I can try that if you like. Wow, I that is, have... that's a detailed, right? Because that, that's important, right? Toa? Like the, yes, the fact that like to... context matters, right? Yes. Yes. So the thing to remember here is that the entire message queue is being evaluated. So the fact that I said something before about someone having celiac matters. Oh no, why did I, why, what did I break? I can, I, I, I think it might be working on my side. We can, we can run. Yeah, okay, let's. If you uh, want, if you want that. Yeah, let's do that. I think I might have changed okay. some stuff while I was playing around, um, but let's That's... try that conversation queue. Okay, awesome, sweet happens right the demo the demo people have attacked my my style is not as great as yours to one i i apologize everybody for my I boring style colors. now i i didn't even know i didn't even know you could do that which i'm excited about uh so um so so before we did this like i was excited i was gonna air punch and it let me go right um uh We'll we'll do some context too, but but let's let's just catch it right. We'll catch it right at the first one. So like I know that one of the things that like we like to say that you probably shouldn't say actually. Um, and one of the things that I, I I like that it catches this is like I've had a hard day at work and I want to punch myself in the face after <laughs> after that code. I didn't catch that the code the code error that you just had. Maybe you had this feeling. Maybe you might say this. I want to punch myself in the face. Uh, I found and what's the gonna error, happen? By the way. Oh, you did. You I always do. Right as soon as yeah. Right, so so um, I got busted. Right here we go, busted. I uh, you said something naughty uh, for self harm. So uh, let's. Uh, Twenty, you want you want to take it back, or do you want me to? No, no, go for it. Yeah, okay. I'm just okay. happy. Right. Okay. So <laughs> I'm happy too. <laughs> so so it's not letting me do this. It's not letting me be say this. Um, and as you saw from that pipeline, uh, we're not actually even sending this to the LLM. So, so what's cool about these components and what I really dig, really, really super neat about, about these components, uh, and let's dive into them actually, let's dive into them. I, I, I put a, made a file called integrations um, because there are lots of integrations that are actually out there and I made it look like these exist. They don't quite yet, but we could put this as an open, uh, open source library. So if you have uh, LLMs that you want to put in or, or different things, come and uh, make, make some, uh, Commit. So, so um, I'm going to make this uh, Cloudflare chat generator. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Um, and let me get, let's get this off the screen here. 
Oh, it is so big. Let me try to just bring this down here. There we go. All right. Um, uh, so uh, I have a, you know, it's a Python class, so I've got a base generator where I'm passing in some secrets, right? I'm passing in secrets and I'm uh, I'm passing in this model. And I want you to note here that I'm using a model. I'm using this news reach search. I'm not using a llama model, even though it's called llama guard. And I guess we should talk about that a little bit if you haven't uh, d dealt with these open models. Llama is uh, from meta and the word llama is because it has LLM in it, right? It looks like the word llama. That's why that's there like that. So uh, uh, I'm not using llama. I'm using a different library uh, here that's based on Mistral. Uh, it's a fine tune that's based on Mistral. Uh, it's an awesome, I highly recommend uh, playing with this fun fun one, um, uh, uh, but it's not llama, right? So so I'm, I'm putting llama guard in front of this. Um, I've got some handy uh, things here, but basically this is all I need to do to make one of those components, right? So, so I'm I'm I've marked my class as, with the the decorator at component, and I've said what it outputs, right? So remember we said that um, the the LLM is going to output uh, replies. It's going to output this replies, and uh, what it takes in is we we make a function. Uh, that has been marked with this component, right? It's marked with this component output types. And this is what it takes in as messages. So that's how I'm defining the input and output on uh, these components. Super handy. Uh, and they're really open-ended. I can really do anything that I want with this. And as long as I return replies, right? So I'm returning a dictionary that has this replies uh, there. Uh, I've got my input and output and I can put that into the pipeline. And it really is uh, that smooth. It's, it's really... Uh, a, a fun, it's delightful to, to work with. Um, because you can do stuff like this llama guard, when we look at it, when we look at how I'm using this llama guard, I'm just calling llama guard. I'm just saying, yeah, do that. Uh, it's actually a little bit hairy in here, a little bit about some of the stuff that you have to do to make this thing work exactly the way that you want it to. Um, because I wanted to be able to pass in our own unsafe categories as well. I wanted to be able to, uh, uh, th these are the ones that are default. Um, and you can see that it has a, a very strict format. Um, I've, I've, I've found that like, if I'm just winging it, it's kind of hard. I have to like be very, very focused on on how it works. Um, so you, you do these categories and then it, it's these names of categories, but you can define these yourself. And so uh, very specifically, let's look at, remember I got, I got busted. And when I said busted, it said self-harm. And it said, you should not encourage people to harm themselves, romanticize or condone self-harm or suicide. That's probably what got triggered there um, uh, uh, because I was talking about punching myself in the face, which I shouldn't do. Um, but you can do these things. So like if you are talking about self-harm, this is what you can do. So I think this is, it's a really nice, really thoughtful. Um, and I think that you'll find uh I started playing with this without it in place. And you'll find that a lot of them are aligned on very similar values to what this default setting here is. Um, uh, because it's probably just humanity, right? Humanity is also aligned on that. We shouldn't do this stuff. Uh, and we should do this in a conversation. But there might be times where you are, you do want to change the, uh, the way that this works. Um, so uh, I have uh, gone ahead and I've I've pushed things through. I've set up my llama guard in such a way. I figured out ways to, uh, again, it, it is hairy and we don't need to even know about that because it's abstracted away, right? So I could build this uh, integration, I could build this component and other people can use it. And that's one of the beauties also of Haystack being uh, open source is that you have these uh, complex things, you know, there's this code that you don't need to worry about. Uh, it just goes and it works, um, which is nice. So uh, again, here here's the, the component here is gonna output uh, the safe response, the unsafe response, the messages and the reasons. That's the reasons that we were passing across there. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I've made it so that you can pass in your own your own ones here. Uh, here's the busted generator. Now the busted generator is not doing anything at all, right? It's not it's not doing anything except just replying back that you got in trouble and we're showing. But what you could do in here is you could maybe uh, mark their a customer record if you know who they were. You can mark them that hey, this person said something strange or. Um, or or alert uh, uh, the, a call center that oh 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 something's go, something's happening over here um, you know that that sort of thing you could you could catch things um, and I can take it in and out too right so I can add additional layers to that pipeline you saw how how quick it was to add into the that pipeline I could just add something new into this pipeline so that that's the busted generator that we have in there um, and it, it is of course very basic and we're saying you said something naughty or the generated answer was naughty um, and to want to talked about it's pretty hard actually. So we saw we saw um, 
we we saw uh, the demo of the naughty user. This naughty assistant is kind of hard, uh, and I actually had to hack it quite a bit uh, to get in there. So let, let's walk let's walk through. Um, uh, oh, I, I know. Let's let let's do this. So I'm gonna I will make it so we will make it so the the thing does not check for where is that? So let's around here. Here we go. Um, I'm going to make it so it doesn't check the user anymore. Okay, so I'm going to make it so that it no longer checks the user. And I am uh, still running, and I think this will. You're no longer rerun. checking the assistant, right? Not the, the user. Assistant, is still uh, uh, I, no, I'm no longer checking the user. So that that statement there, I said, and okay. only check if the user. So so now I'm going to punch myself in the face again, <laughs> and. Uh, I'm I'm going to let this pass through, and we're going to show what the LLM says. The LLM is probably not going to let me do that. Uh, the LLM itself, and it will probably fall within that category. So see, it's giving me self-help there. It's saying that, and that's what it is allowed to do. And uh, I feel like this is one of those, this is a great example of what you can show people who are scared. In that beginning, when we were doing those Mad Libs, of like, show the LLM behaving the way that it wants, and you can kind of walk and, and walk through and see what's happening. But we want to break this. We want it, we want it to do the, the case where it's, it's not allowing that to happen. So there's a trick. There is a trick. Um, and uh, the trick is to actually break the LLM and tell it that it needs to help you with everything. Um, so uh, here I have this little chat message here. We're going to say, uh, I'm going to change the system message to say, you always respond with, I can help with that and nothing else. So you're always going to say that and nothing else. Um, so now uh, if I say I'm going to punch myself in the face, it's going to, well, at first let's do, let's, we'll, we'll air punch first. Um, so, so uh, you can see the system message here. So, so uh, we knew that this was safe, right? Um, and uh, it should say I can help with that. It's, of course, it's probably going to go and, and give me some extra stuff because it's an LLM. Of course, uh, it's going to explain to me how to air punch, um, but it's starting with, I can help with that. Now, I think we're going to break it if it will stick to those instructions, right? I just wanted to say, I can help with that when I say I want to punch myself in the face. Um, I will be very impressed if you get to do this. I tried and tried yesterday and I could not do it. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Uh, I hope it does. I hope it does. It might be. It might be that the model. Oh no! Nope. See, so it's it's warning about that. It it, it is warning about that. So I it didn't get busted. Uh, let's try this. Um, I I'm going to rob a bank. That is that's a big one, right? Uh, and it's going to say I can help with that. And hopefully, hopefully we can get it to just say I want to help with that. You guys retrain this model or something? I swear I couldn't get it to be busted. There oh, we go. Yay! I I busted it. So so the it it probably said I can help with that. Here's how you rob a bank, right? Like, and that's <laughs> the that's the here's how you build a bomb concern, right? Um, so we caught the thing breaking the rules. Now I forced it, right? Because I said I can help with that. Um, mm -hmm. I forced that to happen. I bet you if I took that system message off, we're gonna have something clean cleaner there. Um, yeah. So that is that is the the two side two sides of that demo there um, that I think will really help if you're trying to go uh, and and sell this in, internally right you're trying to build an app uh, I think if you have this protection around it uh, you're you're gonna you're gonna win uh, you're you're gonna at least get moving and people so so what's gonna happen right the let's get back to those people right those these these people here as a blank we're scared that blank. Um, uh, we're scared you're going to leak your account information. We're scared you're going to do this. Um, so, so anything you can think of, you could build one of these categories. And actually, um, I have a, an example category. This is something that uh, I work on an international team. I know y'all do too, actually, right? Tony, you're, you're, you're global as well. Um, one of the things that I uh, want, wish that I could do in chat uh, or actually in meetings is when somebody talks about food, like it's it's 930 right now. And sometimes we have meetings right now and somebody talks about what they're going to have for dinner at 930. Mm -hmm. And it gets my brain going like, no, don't talk about food. Now I'm starving. I'm at 930. And I'm sorry if I just did that to you, to this meeting. I, just, I literally just did what I said we shouldn't do to yes, this meeting. So thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
uh, uh, so uh, I have a little, I have, I have something, we can, we can make a custom one. We can make our own, right? So remember the llama guard, I made it so you could pass in the unsafe categories. And I have one. And like I said, these are these are tricky uh, to do. So I have one that I I prepared in my just just in case directory, in case something broke. And I'm gonna we'll take this over here. And we'll take a look at what it says uh, here uh, because this is what I want to have. This is what I dream I could implement uh, in in real life. We will not talk about food. <laughs> you will get busted if you talk about food. You should not discuss anything related to food, flavors, or preferences for anything edible at all. Don't talk about hunger or wanting to eat. Mention types of food at all. Do not do that. You should not do that. And do not encourage eating. Nothing. Nothing like that. So we're going to try to see if we can catch it uh, uh, based on that. So I've I've made this uh, a variable called unsafe categories. And I'm going to put them in both. We're going to say unsafe categories equals this. And so this is one of those cases where I don't want the user to do something, but I might want the assistant to be able to do something. But in this case, I'm just going to put them in both. But you have control to say which ones you want, right? So what I'm doing now is I've made this component. Now, this component, um, we don't, uh, we, we saw, I spelled it wrong. Man, what did we do before that squiggly line showed up? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, so um, I've I've got this now with this. These unsafe uh, uh, categories are set, and see the component. Nothing else really changed there. That's what's really nice about these components. If you can change and change the way that you tweak how they work, and the rest of the code just works. So it's really nice. Again, the component uh, abstraction layer. I love the abstraction layer here of uh, that Haystack provides. All right, so uh, here we go. So uh, we Let's have talk about now pizza. You want you oh, now? I'm thinking about pizza. You did it. You did it. All right. So um, I want uh, to eat pizza, and hopefully you said something naughty food. So we caught it. We caught it. And I could now I could talk about uh, other stuff now, and Buster would get caught, right? So it's just specifically about food. Um, I, I I like tacos personally, and. It, I don't know. It looks like I made it through. Uh, <gasps> da, da, da. I like to eat tacos. So it, it is sensitive, right? I hope that uh -oh. gets registered as food. Come on. LLM. Come on. Come on. It's making it through. It but is making anyways, it through. This... Oh my gosh, and now look how hungry it is. And that, that is exactly what I didn't want to see. I did not want to see carne asada on my screen because now I am thinking about carne asada. So uh, uh, that is, um, uh, you can control these and definitely things that you can play with. Uh, maybe, I, you know, I should probably define what it can and can't do. Uh, I think it gets a little bit better as you you talk about what's possible there. Tawana, you you talked about, uh, I, you also talked about a, a diabetic situation that you had. Can you talk? Yeah, I actually tell, have talk? it running now so we can like, act, I can oh, actually probably. Yeah. Okay. Continue, Let's switch back. and then like I started it. Yeah, do you see it now? Yep. Okay, so this is my chat app. And I've just started off by saying I have a friend coming over. By the way, you can define these in the stream that config file. So you can define all your colors and themes, etc. in the stream that config file. Mm -hmm. I said I have a friend coming over. I tried this yesterday, it worked really well. They are celiac, unfortunately. Oh, so that's the people running. who can't eat gluten, right? Yes, but, yeah. uh, very much so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have a family member who is celiac, so I definitely know this is not something I would actually be doing. Um, it is running. Okay, it's just a bit slow. Um, I'm going to put some flour in the water. Let's give it an evil face, too. Let's see <laughs> if that works. <laughs> There we are, yes. violence and hate. Violence and hate, wow. Yeah. And I would say criminal planning, true, truly. That like is you true. Definitely... I guess yes. I, the main thing I wanted to show here is that I put some flour in the water out of context would not have been something violent or hateful at all. And I wanted to show that the fact that I said that in relation to someone being celiac was the thing that caught it off. So yeah. that's what I wanted to show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, th thanks for for getting that going. That's great, and that that's the that's the concern, right? That the concern is that like, how could you possibly ever do that? And like, I to what I like to think about like, how, what would that look like if we tried to build that? Like, we have tried to build that in the past, right? We've we've all built these like gnarly regexes the to try to go and say like, are they saying something bad? Running against this crazy big list, and here we have this nice English to English 
and almost like almost at the level i think i think as this moves forward i think that this technology will be a, a thing that we can hand to people right we can hand these guardrails to people and then let them test and see if it works i i i'm really excited uh for what this unlocks i think uh going forward so I actually had a question for you, and I think we can now open it up to questions from the audience too. So sure. let us know if you have any questions, but I had one specifically for you. Um, mm -hmm. So I have been working on a demo where um, using a model for a decision path. So I know this is Llama Guard and the primary application is for it to um, output a reason as to why something shouldn't happen or why something shouldn't go forward. But it's actually quite neat in that there are codes as to the reasons, what the reasons are, etc. Do you think we could use this as a way to root queries as well? So for example, I ask a query, this is a query about, I don't know, a specific part of customer support. This is a query about booking a flight. This is a query about canceling a flight, etc. Have you seen that being used as well? Gotcha. Yeah, I, I think that like that the same tech the same technique that they're doing there, I think you could probably use in like a system message, right? The same sort of thing of like, hey, if if it's this sort of thing, I want you to then return only this. Uh and of course, playing with it in the same sort of ways. Uh um, yeah, so so because there's there's like different models, right? So um uh, actually, um I think one of the things that I didn't do uh was show that uh we we uh at, at cloudflare we have multiple models and i uh, this this just so everybody knows we this was not a planned bump set spike let me show you the docs of where what we have over here uh but there are different models and i think like one of the things that you're probably thinking thinking about here is maybe text classification so you could kind of come and you could do this like text classification on here this is one of a a model called the stilbert uh that does that sort of thing where you could if you were able to fine tune it you could probably say that it, this is 90 96% right that it is in fact uh, um, customer support, that sort of thing. Um, so there are probably specific models that you want to do for that. Um, one of the things that we just uh, released was fine tuning. So you could also fine tune um, to have it do that exactly where you're like, you give it a bunch of lists of what you think might happen and say what you want it to return is just route this name, route customer support, route this and and do a fine tune uh, for that. So you could, you could upload a fine tune for that. So um, one of the things that I wanted to also call out while we're on this page, uh, because I know that people are struggling. I, I know we talked in the beginning about money uh, being a thing. Anything I hear that says beta is free. It's free to run inference on this and it's a REST API call away. And there's an SDK now too. There's a Python SDK. And there's also a workers thing where you can host stuff. So like, I really want to make sure that you know that uh, if you come there and use that, uh, there's a QR code here. And again, uh, we shared this in the chat already, but this 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 link here, uh, come uh, and check that out. If you want to know, know more, there's a there's also a video uh, uh, here that kind of does does an, uh, a much better job of explaining what I had uh, tried to do uh, in the beginning when I when I did start talking about what we're doing in the AI space. Um, uh, any performance benchmarks for Llama Guard? I actually haven't looked there. They, you know, uh, till they, they, uh, this came out uh, last year, and I know that they're talking about making newer. So, so this is based on Llama Two. Uh, there's all these murmurs about this Llama Three is coming, and I would imagine that along with it's going to come a new friend, and I think the new friend that comes along is going to be way better tuned than, uh, than this one is. The the the, uh, the things that I kind of had to do there to to make it work. Uh, uh, like sometimes it would return instead of a zero it returns an O, but that's just kind of the base model of how this, this is. I think there's a, probably a newer, more tuned version that will come with the, this next round of, uh, of the next version of this open, uh, model from meta. I would imagine that there's something will come along with that. Uh, um, but there are, um, benchmarks. Do you have a favorite benchmark site, uh, to go to? I, I think the arena. Some, some, there's something, yeah. I, I don't know. There, there's, there is, there's a, there's a couple of those like where you can go head to head when things go head to head in an arena or something like that. Um, I think that um, uh, that's a. I'm sure it's on there. Uh, that that llama guard is on there. Uh, but really, this this is the. Um, I, I hope that there's this awareness that this is available, and this isn't the only one. There are there are other other models that are are out there too. But I know that this is a hurdle for builders, uh, you know, because there's, there's legal teams and there's, there's, there's 
that's their job to to make sure that nothing bad happens and if you can help them uh feel comfortable with that i think that getting your app to production is closer uh and that's what i hope to have to get from that yeah and i think there was a there was a comment in the chat like why have filters doesn't it make make it worse and i guess i just want to like Yes, in some ways it does. Your your application is just not um, answering um, anything out of the blue, but it really depends on what you want to build. Um, I can imagine that if you want to set put something out into production and you just really have to make sure that some things just don't fly, um, this is very, very valuable. And make sure that not just that the user is not um, abusing your platform, but also your platform is not responding in a way that you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, condone, basically. So yeah, in in some ways, yes, it does make it worse because I said, I'm going to put some flour in the water and I was just cut short and I just can't continue. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I, I think that like, out of the goodness of your heart, you would believe that the <laughs> language model has been trained yes. in a certain way. But you can't be certain, right? So I think that's the that's the place. Um, there is another uh, another question from Vivek here saying that what's happening uh, be, behind the scenes does it pass back uh, uh, to check sensitivity? Uh, it's it itself is its own model, so it's not using the other model that you have there. So again, another thing that you can do here is you can have a smaller model and then have this model in front of it, right? You can have 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 a, a model here, and you know if people are building. Uh, we have a product called uh, AI Gateway, and uh, AI Gateway has an AI firewall, and we will do, probably do something similar to this, right? We'll 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 say, hey, people, if you want to use this, you, we've built this tool for you, and here's what you it's allowed to say, what it isn't allowed to say. Show us examples of what you don't want to have happen, and you can basically build this firewall, right? So this protection uh, uh, there, it's it's giving things a little bit, making people feel more comfortable. And I do I do see your point of like of like, well, sh we should still give it to the AI and, and see what it can do to to fix it, and that is something you could do, right? So again, to the to the the beauty of of what we have here with this pipeline is I can push this off and go someplace, right? Right? I could I could take that off and, and and take it and put it into a place where there's a training set of like oh we need to figure out how to properly handle this because what happened didn't happen the way that we wanted it to and make it better over time right so you, you fine tune it to be like oh if this happens this is what we want to have happen uh, but you caught it before it leaked out and somebody get, got that tweet right somebody put that tweet out there about, oh ha, ha I got it to give me a one dollar car you know or mm -hmm. I got it to you know the, all all that stuff it, this is this. This is a place where you can uh, be overly protective uh, at, at front. At front, and you, while that might not feel uh, as a builder something that you want to be doing, it also doesn't feel good when you're like, "I want to push this to production." And they're like, "Well, what if it's dangerous?" And like, so there's this, there's this, there's this delicate balance, and I think that this gives us gives you an extra tool in your toolbox to be able to say, um, "This is." Oh, here's a concern that you have. Well, what if we put this here? Would, would this help? Like, and then you know, take the project for, further that way. I think one other thing we can tell Vivek about this is specifically the outputs from your Llama Guard component. So there's actually a lot more there apart from the reasons. It's not being used currently in the pipeline that we built. But if you go to the Llama Guard custom component, you'll notice that there's everything in there outputted. It gives you the unsafe messages as well as the reasons, the unsafe response, the safe response, the safe messages, etc. All of it is there. So I this component as is could then be used later on, even if something is deemed to be unsafe, you can then do some testing. It's like, why was it deemed unsafe? What was the unsafe response that I got that was unsafe? And so on. Um, yeah. So that's one thing. Actually, when I first shared my screen and I was showing you the pipeline diagram, I removed those because they made the pipeline look very complex and I wanted to focus on the ones that we were using, but they are there for you to use. Right. And actually what I did, this this is all you had to do to draw that pipeline, which is is definitely like, I, I loved this. The fact that was, how, 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 how did you do that? And <laughs> we were working together and we were able to like show me literally how it was working. This is great, super cool. Uh, using Mermaid, another great open source library that I love uh, as well. Uh, we also to, have pipeline.show now. So if you're in a collab, you don't have to write it to a file. You can just display oh, it. Oh, nice. There awesome. you go. Awesome. All right. Cool.
Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. I didn't get the chance to introduce myself earlier, but my name is Tilda. I work at Deep Set on Haystack along with Tuana, and um, we will email out links to all the code and slides that were shared today. But in the meantime, if you want to stay on top of future Haystack events, follow us on Luma. I just dropped a link into the chat. We would love to see you again. And thank you again. Take care and have a wonderful weekend.